tonight demanding justice India Supreme Court takes action on better protection of medical workers across the nation with the creation of a hospital safety task force slow progress Russia claims the capture of key strategic Ukrainian held fronts as the nation aims to bolster ties with China fiery campaigns as the democrats take aim against Trump with the help of the obamas Trump focuses on countering the DNC with a spotlight on fighting rising crime. And poolside puppies, the fastest way to beating the heat on a hot summer day is with the help of some much needed pool time. And these pups definitely had a blast. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News. I'm Nadi Balasuria. Over the past 24 hours, we saw some key developments that we have continued to keep you up to date on throughout. From high-level diplomacy moves in our region to updates on the road to the White House. But we start off in neighboring India with updates on the mass protests. India's Supreme Court created a hospital safety task force to recommend steps to ensure medical workers' safety days after the rape and murder of a trainee doctor caused national outrage and protests by junior doctors and allies. The August 9th attack in Calcutta has caused national outrage and triggered demands for justice for the victim and greater safety for female healthcare workers. Doctors in several places have been refusing to see non-emergency patients. Their safety and protection. Chief Justice of India D. Y. Chandrachud says the issue is of the highest concern and will consist of a diverse segment of doctors from different parts of the country. The court suggested the doctor-led task force consider sweeping reforms and new safety measures, such as separate resting rooms for female staff and the creation of employee panels to conduct quarterly safety audits. It also ordered a federal paramilitary force to be deployed at the hospital where the crime took place and directed police to submit a report on the status of its investigation on Thursday. But hundreds of junior doctors who have been staying away from work in protest say they are not satisfied and will keep on demonstrating. The national body of trainee and junior doctors said in a statement that, quote, legislation alone will not solve these problems. We need a comprehensive overhaul of the system. The court told the panel to submit an interim report within three weeks and a final report within two months. It also asked doctors abstaining from work across the country to resume duties. Still on updates in India, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be visiting Poland after 46 years, marking the first visit by an Indian leader to the country in nearly half a century. Scheduled for today and tomorrow, the visit is particularly significant as it coincides with the 70th anniversary of diplomatic relations between India and Poland. Modi will also visit Kyiv, a first visit to Ukraine by an Indian Prime Minister since diplomatic relations were established 30 years ago. The trip to Ukraine comes weeks after his visit to Moscow, during which he rebuked Russian President Vladimir Putin over the war, which began with Russia's full-scale invasion of its neighbour in February 2022. European Parliament member Darius Jonsky highlighted the importance of this visit for both political and business relations. He noted Poland's keen interest in discussing healthcare, where the country urgently needs 25,000 doctors and specialists, as well as opportunities for collaboration in the IT sector with Indian companies. Jonsky emphasized that PM Modi's visit would strengthen the bilateral ties between the two nations. And over now to Bangladesh, since student-led opposition protests led Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina to step down and flee Bangladesh, religious minorities say their communities have suffered violent attacks in the power vacuum. Bangladesh is around 90% Muslim, with Christians and Buddhists making up most of the rest of the population. According to Bangladesh Hindu Buddhist Christian Unity Council, 
Four people who belong to the minority community were killed following the deposition of Sheikh Hasina's government. The group estimates that there have been more than 200 incidents where temples, religious crematoriums and other places of worship have also been vandalized and attacked by mobs. The Bangladesh interim government insists reports of violence against minorities are exaggerated and often fake. The interim government also says whatever violence is happening is political and not sectarian. Widespread violence largely subsided following the swearing-in of the interim government and minorities say the fear of prosecution still still looms over them during this time of political unrest. Yet more moves of delicate diplomacy are being carried out in our region tonight. Chinese Premier Li Chiang met with Russian leaders in Moscow during a four-day trip to Russia and its ally Belarus. As Beijing shrugs off Western criticism of its robust Kremlin ties amid the war in Ukraine. Russian Prime Minister Mikhail Mishustin met Chinese Premier Li Chiang in Moscow. Mishustin and Lee discussed bilateral relations and exchanged views on cooperation between the two countries. Lee will also be meeting President Putin for talks at the Kremlin later today. Lee will hold talks with the Russian President Vladimir Putin on China-Russia cooperation and strategic ties. Lee hailed the two countries' relations after his arrival at the Moscow's Nukovo airport, where he was greeted by Russian officials and a guard of honor. The Premier's visit for a long-standing annual meeting with the Russian Prime Minister is the first to Russia by a high-level Chinese official since a surprise military incursion by Ukrainian forces into the Russian border region of Kursk two weeks ago. Beijing has faced mounting scrutiny and pressure from the West to curtail the export of dual-use goods such as aerospace manufacturing and technology equipment to Russia, which Western leaders and Kyiv have alleged are propping up the Russian war effort. And on the Russia-Ukraine conflict, Russia claimed the formation of new military groupings to retaliate against Ukraine's latest surprise attack as it captured the eastern Ukrainian town of New York. Washington said it has no plans to allow Ukraine to use any of its long-range weapons supplied by Western allies. Russia said on Tuesday that it had captured the eastern Ukrainian town of New York, a small yet strategically important logistics hub, and a significant part of Moscow's push to capture the entire Donetsk region. Donetsk is one of four Ukrainian regions that Russia claims to have annexed, while it remains a territorial claim that Kyiv and the West have rejected as illegal. Two weeks after Ukraine's surprise attack on Kursk, aimed at weakening Russian forces, the Kremlin announced on Tuesday that new military groupings were being formed in eastern Ukraine. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky described the situation in the east as difficult, but the country's top commander says forces have pushed to capture 1,263 square kilometers of territory, including 93 settlements. Washington says its policy of not allowing Ukraine to use long-range missiles inside Russia remains unchanged, despite Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky repeatedly seeking permission to use American long-range weapons and British Storm Shadow missiles. While Zelensky continues to reiterate that being able to use long-range weapons would halt the current invasion in Russia, the Biden administration remains concerned about the potential for escalation, adding that the drones currently used by Ukraine have been effective in hitting Russian targets. Washington is also effectively blocking Britain's request to allow Kyiv to use British Storm Shadow missiles, which have a range of up to 250 kilometers against targets deep inside Russian territory. Let's take a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. On the road to the White House tonight, Former U.S. President Barack Obama took aim at Republican Donald Trump at the Democratic National Convention, urging Americans to back Kamala Harris in her 11th hour presidential bid against Trump. Obama has thrown his considerable political capital behind Harris as she seeks to make history herself as the first woman and first black and South Asian person to be elected U.S. president. He took aim at Trump, the Republican who followed him into the White House in 2017, and praised President Joe Biden, his vice president who was forced out of the 2024 race by Democratic allies who feared he would lose to Trump in November. At 63, Barack Obama loomed large in the messy deliberations that 
that led Biden to step out of the race last month and endorse Harris, his vice president. Ahead of Biden dropping out of the race, Obama allies notably helped lead the charge in calling for the president to get out of the race in favor of a candidate they believed was more suitable to take on Trump. Obama's former chief campaign strategist David Axelrod said last month that Biden is not winning this race, while actor and longtime friend of the Obamas George Clooney called on Biden to drop out of the race in a bombshell op-ed that was published just weeks after the Hollywood star co-hosted Biden alongside Obama at a ritzy campaign event in Los Angeles. Meanwhile, the Republican camp continues its counter-programming efforts with Trump drawing light to lapses in the Harris Wall's campaigns as the polls show battleground states like Michigan still undecided on who the clear favorite is between the two. Donald Trump in battleground Michigan today, hoping to steal some of the thunder from his rival's convention. The former president's focus today, crime. You can't walk across the street to get a loaf of bread, you get shot, you get mugged, you get raped, you get whatever it may be, and you've seen it and I've seen it, and it's time for a change. But recent statistics show violent crime falling in nearly 70 major cities across the country, including a 17 percent decrease in homicides compared to the same period around last year. <laughs> President Biden hammering the point on the convention stage. The murder rate is falling faster than any time in history. Violent crime has dropped to the lowest level of more than 50 years. And crime will keep coming down when we put a prosecutor in the Oval Office instead of a convicted felon. In Michigan today, Trump keenly aware crime could be a potent political issue for a key group of voters, suburban women. I keep hearing about the suburban woman doesn't like Trump. Well, I think it's a fake poll because why would they like me? I'm gonna, I keep the suburbs safe. Uh, I hope they like my personality. I have a nice personality. But to me, it wouldn't be very important, the personality. They want to be, uh, they want to be safe. Over on the war in Israel, Secretary of State Antony Blinken pushed for progress towards a Gaza ceasefire and hostage release deal as he visited Egypt. But major areas of dispute are still to be resolved in talks planned for later this week. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken met with the President of Egypt on Tuesday as he continued to press for a ceasefire deal between Israel and Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Lincoln's meeting in Cairo followed talks with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu a day earlier. Lincoln said Netanyahu had accepted what the U.S. diplomat called a bridging proposal aimed at narrowing the gaps between the two sides after the talks last week paused without a breakthrough. U.S. officials have not spelled out how the current proposal differs from previous versions. Negotiations have so far failed to deliver an agreement since U.S. President Joe Biden in May outlined a potential ceasefire that would pause fighting in what is now a 10-month conflict, which would precipitate a return of Israeli captives held in Gaza and a possible withdrawal of Israeli forces from the war-ravaged enclave. Israel accepts the bridging proposal. It's now incumbent on Hamas to do the same. Blinken pressed Hamas now to similarly agree to the latest terms. But Osama Hamdan, a senior Hamas official who spoke to Reuters from an undisclosed location, said the Islamist group that governed Gaza didn't need new talks. It needed an implementation mechanism. Meanwhile, fighting rages on in tiny, crowded Gaza. Israel's military campaign has killed at least 40,000 people since October, according to Palestinian health authorities. The health ministry said 11 more, including women and children, died in Israeli strikes Tuesday in Khan Yunis. The war in Gaza began on October 7, 2023, when Hamas gunmen stormed into Israeli communities, killing around 1,200 people and abducting about 250 hostages, according to Israeli tallies. On Tuesday, Israel's military said it had recovered the bodies of six of its hostages from southern Gaza. The army said that 109 hostages remained in the Palestinian territory. Israel believed around a third of them to be already dead. His nephew, Zahiro Shahar Moor, told Reuters that his uncle was abandoned by an Israeli government that refused to make the concessions that would have brought Avraham home alive. Blinken has called the latest push for a deal probably the best, possibly the last opportunity to bring hostages home and pause the fighting. 
A bus carrying Pakistani pilgrims overturned in Iran, killing close to 30 passengers. The crash happened in the central Iranian province of Yazd and was due to a defective braking system. This was according to a preliminary police investigation. Another 23 passengers were injured, seven of them critically. The pilgrims were travelling from the Sindh province in Pakistan to Iraq's holy city of Karbala to commemorate one of the biggest events in the Shia calendar. Some 53 people are believed to have been on the bus at the time of the crash, including pilgrims from Lakhana, Ghotki and cities in Sindh. 11 women and 17 men are among those who died in the crash. The bus caught fire in front of Deshir Taf checkpoint in Iran, around 681 kilometers south of the capital Tehran. The bus swerved off the road due to lack of control by the driver of the vehicle, unfamiliarity with the road and high speeds and technical problems. Pakistan's President Asif Ali Zadari said he was mobilizing the foreign ministry to repatriate the bodies of those killed in the crash and provide aid to the injured. Pakistan's consulate in Iran has been asked to assist in recovery efforts and the country's ambassador to Tehran, Mohammad Mudassir Tipur, said he was in touch with the Iranian government and local authorities in Yazd. The search for six people who are missing after a yacht sunk off the coast of Sicily in the early hours of Monday is now in its third day. Rescue teams are expected to attempt to enter the sleeping cabin of the ship today after being hampered by debris blocking access. Survivors of the sunken luxury yacht of Sicily's coast left Palermo's pediatric hospital on Tuesday as search and rescue operations to find six missing people resumed. Dr. Domenico Cipolla, the director of pediatric admission at the hospital, said James Emsley and his wife Charlotte Galunski had been treated for minor injuries, while their one-year-old daughter Sophie was unharmed. Following an intense storm that sank the vessel on Monday, divers continued search efforts, hoping to find six missing people, including British tech entrepreneur Mike Lynch. The British flag basin yacht was carrying 22 people, and anchored off the port of Porticello when it was hit by the fierce storm. Fifteen people managed to escape before it capsized. Those unaccounted for are Lynch and his 18-year-old daughter Hannah, Judy and Jonathan Bloomer, a non-executive chair of Morgan Stanley International, and Clifford Chen's lawyer Chris Morvillo and his wife Neda Morvillo. The only body so far retrieved was that of an onboard Antiguan chef, Ricardo Thomas. The fire brigade, which is leading the search operation, said entering the boat is proving difficult. The yacht is lying at a depth of 160 feet, giving divers only 8 to 10 minutes at the wreck site before they have to resurface. Mike Lynch, 59, is one of the UK's best-known tech entrepreneurs. He built the country's largest software firm, Autonomy, and was referred to as Britain's Bill Gates. The vessel was owned by Lynch's wife, who survived the disaster. Storms and heavy rains have ravaged Italy in recent days. After weeks of scorching heat, warmed the sea temperature to record highs, raising the risk of extreme weather conditions, according to experts. Kenyan police arrested eight of their own officers and launched a manhunt after a man accused of murdering and dismembering 42 women escaped from a Nairobi police cell along with a dozen other people. A man arrested on suspicion of serial killings is among a group of prisoners who escaped from police custody in Nairobi on Tuesday, according to police. <laughs> Collins Jumaisi was arrested last month in connection with the discovery of at least six bodies in an old quarry, now used as a rubbish dump. The bodies, all women, were found wrapped in plastic bags. Masengeli said any personnel found to have taken part will face legal repercussions. Police say Jumaisi admitted to killing 42 women, including his wife, but his lawyer told the court he was tortured into making a confession. Prosecutors deny he had been mistreated. Let's go in for a short commercial break. More world news right after this. Welcome back. 
Relaxing in a body of water is most times the best way to beat the heat and these playful pups got to enjoy exactly that on a sunny summer afternoon. Safe to say they had a ball of a time. There were doggy paddles and a little sunbathing while some of the most deserving dogs got a little relief from the summer heat. Pups from Wisconsin's Marathon County Humane Society got their own pool party. Some of them will swim, some of them won't, but it's just like a really great enrichment and bonding opportunity and just like all the feels, all the good feels. <laughs> About 25 dogs got to live out their poolside fantasies on a warm August day. The pool is open to the shelter dogs on the day after it closes for the summer season to humans. This pool party was more than an afternoon distraction. Humane Society officials hope this social interaction will get the shelter dogs prepared for their forever homes. It's going to help us in the long run in order to keep them happy and healthy while they're in their temporary home at the shelter. And with that, we mark the end of today's bulletin. Stay tuned as Sanvi Muddanayaka will join you next with the nightly business report. We will see you again tomorrow with the latest happenings across the globe. Thank you for watching. Good night.